welcome back to sustainable innovation youtube channel where we've been talking about sustainable farming practices sustainable energy efficiency and water conservation i'm your host Anne Ukele, and our today's topic is going to be on dairy farming and with dairy farming today we are going to focus on dairy diseases and apart from the diseases, we are going to expound much on specific diseases and how to mitigate them. Apart from the diseases part, we are going to talk about the waste management in the dairy farm. Finally, we are going to talk about how to sustainably use this waste for increased household income and also fight climate change. Thanks so much. Please enjoy. My name is Francis Ubongo and I'm the husband and the director of this farm. Uh, mostly we have diseases which are affecting animals, particularly we have got East Coast fever, we have got <coughs> milk fever, we have got uh, bloating of the animals and uh, we have been trying in this farm to see to it that uh, we control the diseases which might affect them at any time. Diseases of this area, or the common problem which we have met, first of all, is the milky fever. Milky fever is a disease caused by lack of minerals in the body of an animal, particularly uh, an in-calf cow, which is about to give birth two months to a calving day, is when they are being affected mostly. You find that an animal was just okay, and when you come, you find that it can't stand. It is always sleeping. If you try to stand it, no way it will still uh, lie where it is. And that one, we control by providing the milk, uh, the minerals from the source. Like uh, the source which we have is the solid one, which they leak at any time they want. And uh, there's another one which we buy and we put on the feeds when they are feeding at any time they, wa they want or they feel that their body is lacking minerals. The other one is East Coast fever, which is caused by, uh, uh, we call them ticks. So what we try to do to control is the tick itself, such that the animal doesn't being attacked by the ticks. How do we control? We control by making a routine washing of the animals. These ones are being washed every Friday of a week to control the diseases. So the last disease, which is also common, is the one which is caused by sesame fly. This area is prone of sesame fly. So we have tried, the other time we had a net from the K3 people which expels the sesame fly itself. So if you put it around, they will not attack from down and your animal is not being affected. In the area, we cannot say that there is a rampant diseases which have disturbed us. The only Two, which are important, is the milky fever, which I've said, and East Coast fever. The only problem is that the doctors are not around, so we have to get them from a distance to come and control. But why do we wait? We have to control such that they are not affected. Those are the only diseases which we are meeting in this area. Thank you. Okay, let me take you through the process of waste management. Now, in waste management, first of all, the structure, the way it is built, it builds in such a way that it helps me manage the, 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 the waste easily. Now, as I told you before, we have got two portions, this side where they sleep and this side where they eat. Now, the, the side where they, they sleep, it is built in such a way that when the cow, the cow is not able to turn. So, while sleeping, the waste will come on this sloppy side. Also while they are eating, when they are eating here, the cow is in a position that the waste will come to that sloppy part of it. Now, once the waste are collected at the center here, 
we have got the dung and we have got the urine. The urine will flow along the, 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 the channel here. If you can look at the way the building, the, the structure is, at least this place is sloping. That is to help the urine flow easily to where uh, we are collecting them. As for the dung, the dung is normally uh, swept after every, I would say, three times in a day. We say early in the morning before the milking, then midday, then also in the evening, late before the milking, the evening milking is done. So once the, the dung is collected, there is a field which you'll also see down there where we collect them and after some time they get they become manure and that manure we use it in the farm actually i would say my farm is a is a, an organic would you call it organic these days farm because i don't use anything like pesticide or fertilizer i just use manure the manure i use in the farm is from here once the dung is collected we do take the dung plus the waste that come from the feed, uh, from the feeds, the droppings, then they are put together. After some time, we turn them and they make very good manure. That is what I use where I plant the mulatto, that is the grass the animals use. It's also the one that I use, the vegetable farm. Now, this, uh, this urine, after it's flow, I told you it flows to that place. That is where you'll see we can even make biogas using that uh, slurry. We call it slurry. So it flows. That one, now, it is made in such a way that flow such that this place remains dry. Remember you told about the foot and mouth? When the animals stay in a place that is not dry most of the time, it is most likely to get some diseases. So to avoid that, the place must be very clean and also the urine, once the, the, the cows pass that urine, it is not uh, left to just stay all over here. It flows through that channel to where they go. Also when the washing is done, because this place has to be washed for it to be clean. So once you pour the water, as you wash, that water flows easily through that channel to the outer, to the outer part and that helps us to manage that waste quite easily. When we collect that urine, that place we also sometimes get that urine and pour it onto the manure to make, that, uh, to make it rich in nitrogen. As you all know, nitrogen is very good for the, for the plants. For urine, as I've, been, as I've said before, urine, when we collect it, the reason why we collect this urine, urine is a very important component in the farm. In fact, this urine, I, once it is collected, uh, we put it in a container for five to seven days. Then we mix it and then we use it for top dressing. See, it's still helping me in the farm. In fact, the, the plants do so well because of that urine alone. Apart from using it for top dressing, I also use this urine once it is collected, and that's why I don't want it to go to waste. Once it is collected, I mix it with tithonia, the plant. Uh, you just put tithonia in water, mix it with urine for some days, then you sieve, you get your spray. There will be no problem with, the, with, the, with pesticide. You use it as pesticide on plants, in fact, I would say most of the plants, vegetables, maize, everything. I don't have to go to the shop to buy pesticides. I just use that urine that I get from the animals. So the waste matters that I get from, the, uh, from my animals here, actually I don't see it as waste. I see it as other things that I use on the farm because it helps me. I don't have to use money to buy pesticide. I don't have to use money to buy fertilizer. I use it as top dressing. I use it as pesticide. So that is the importance of the waste that comes from the farm. And that is why I can't just leave it 
just to go ahead to see that it is well taken care of. I collect it and put it in a container. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you learned something under dairy farming. Please feel free to subscribe, click that notification bell, like this channel, and feel free to share this. Leave us a comment so that we can be able to grow together and figure out the best direction that we can take this time. Thank you so much.